So, dear students, I will introduce one of the important concept on bio inorganic molecules. Questions from bio inorganic molecules at the GMAIN at advanced level, many times questions are repeated appearing the different exceptions, GMAIN or it may be IIT adults. I will discuss the well known famous molecule, hemoglobin molecule. Very well known in monotones, hemoglobin molecule. Now, hemoglobin molecule is the red pigment of our blood. Hemoglobin molecule is the red pigment of our blood. It is packaged in RBCs. It is packaged in RBCs, red blood cells. These hemoglobin molecules transport oxygen from lungs to different parts of our body. It is transporting oxygen from lungs to different parts of different parts of the body. Different parts of the body. One more thing, hemoglobin molecules are packaged in RBCs. Hemoglobin molecules are packaged in RBCs. This hemoglobin molecule transport oxygen from lungs to different parts of the body. This hemoglobin molecule would be hemoglobin, hemoglobin. Then you can consider this one, it is actually made up of heme plus globin chain, heme plus globin chain. Globin chain, I think, but it is a protein chain. Globin chain is nothing but protein chain. Hemoglobin, heme plus globin chain. Come into the next heme. What is this heme? Heme is actually made up of iron plus for firing ring. For firing. For firing ring. For firing ring. Heme means this is iron and again the surrounding ring what you call heme. Iron plus iron plus two plus the porphyrin ring to the what call heme. Let's see first what is porphyrin ring. This is actually porphyrin ring. This porphyrin ring is actually made up of four pyrrole rings. Four pyrrole rings bridged by four methane bridges. Let me say each bridge is methane bridge. Methane. So, porphyrin is actually made up of four pyrrole rings, which are by four methane bridges. This is what porphyrin. Now, coming to the next, this particular hemoglobin, if you consider oxyhemoglobin and again deoxyhemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin and again deoxyhemoglobin. Now, if there is no oxygen in this particular, there is no oxygen in this particular. Only water molecule is bonded to iron. This is what you call deoxyhemoglobin. Let us talk about first deoxyhemoglobin only. Deoxyhemoglobin. Then in this iron plus 2 with it, it is actually high spin. That means what? If we plus 2, 6 electrons are there, 6 electrons are not getting paid. Therefore, we are calling it as what? High spin. Once it is high spin, we can find it as what a paramagnetic. Then, coordination number around iron, six bonds are there. Let me say the coordination number six and geometry comes to be definitely octahedral. What about this one? This is what deoxyhemoglobin. Once we are inhaling oxygen or A, then oxygen is bound to iron plus two and the forming oxyhemoglobin. Now we talk about Oxy hemoglobin, oxy hemoglobin. Let me see. In this also, iron still remains as plus two only. Then oxygen actually is strong field ligand. Therefore, the six electrons are getting paid. Then definitely one electron are getting paid. You are getting what a low spin complex. Still, once you are seeing low spin, electrons are getting paid. Let me see. This is what they are. And again, again it's a 
coordination in brain remains, coordination of the remains sits up. Now, instead of what a molecule here, what we are saying, oxygen molecule is bound like this. Therefore, it's what we call oxygen molecule, coordination of the remains Still, dynamic comes to be octahedral. So, either it may be deoxyhemoglobin or it may be oxyhemoglobin. This particular iron oxygen number remains the deoxyhemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin, iron remains as Fe plus 2. Coming to the next one, this O2 plus hemoglobin, then we can call it as water, oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin. Coming to the next one, CO plus HB, what do you call carboxy, carboxy hemoglobin. Once O2 is bound, oxyhemoglobin, instead of O2, when CO is bound, then we call it as water, carboxy hemoglobin. Yes, definitely, this hemoglobin also carrying, this actually transporting CO2 from our body to by out healing, carbon dioxide coming out. CO2 plus hemoglobin. This particular CO2 is not directly bound to iron atom. CO2 molecule is actually bound to one of the NH2 group of the hemoglobin. It is not directly bonded to Fe plus 2. O2 molecule, CO molecule, directly bonded to iron atom. But in the case of CO2 molecule, it is bonded to one of the NH2 group of the hemoglobin molecule. Therefore, it is what I am reading. This is HB, NH, COOH. This is the thing. Therefore, this particular molecule would call carbaminohemoglobin. You call carbaminohemoglobin. You see, O2 plus HB, oxyhemoglobin. CO plus HB, carboxyhemoglobin. But CO2 plus HB, carbaminohemoglobin. Because CO2 molecule is not bonded directly to iron atom. It is bonded to one of the NH2 group of the hemoglobin molecule. Remember, hemoglobin is a complex molecule, it is moreover it is tetramer. Just to make you to understand, simply I give a skeletal structure, not the complete structure. Simply to make you to understand the AGB, I give only the skeletal structure, not the complete structure. Hemoglobin molecule is a complex structure. I put only skeletal structure. This is skeletal structure of hemoglobin as shown on the whole. Now, Wherever oxygen is actually bonded, once oxygen molecule is bonded to this particular iron atom, the iron oxygen number is not changing, we are saying. Therefore, oxygen binding, we generally we never say oxygen bonding, we say oxygen binding. Oxygen binding to hemoglobin is oxygenation, but not a oxidation. What I am saying? Oxygen binding to hemoglobin is oxygenation. Oxygenation, but not oxidation, but not oxidation. Means what? One oxygen molecule binds to this particular iron atom. The iron atom oxidation number is not changing. There is no chemical reaction. Once iron atom is changing the oxidation number, you or me can say that the oxidation or reduction is something, but oxidation number is not changing. Therefore, oxygen binding to hemoglobin, we are calling it what? Oxygenation oxygenation but not oxidation means what once in the lungs it is forming oxyhemoglobin once it enters the bloodstream due to many metabolic activities large amount of co2 is generated once co2 is generated the acidity the acidic strength acidity increases once impure blood is having what a lower ph because of co2 improved blood, impure blood is having lower ph at lower ph iron and oxygen bond is becoming weak and it is liberating oxygen. Like this, oxyhemoglobin in the bloodstream, deoxyhemoglobin, oxy, deoxy, like this, oxyhemoglobin becoming deoxyhemoglobin, deoxyhemoglobin again reaching to the lungs, again carries oxygen. Like this, due to pH difference, the oxygenation and deoxygenation clearly taking place so that oxygen is actually transported from lungs to different parts of the body. So, the brief discussion about this particular hemoglobin. Next, coming to next point. This in hemoglobin, iron atom is equal to how many number of nitrogen atoms? Question I put many times in this exams. See, four nitrogen atoms and one more in the hematozole. So, in hemoglobin, iron atom is actually bonded to what? Five nitrogen atoms. Five nitrogen atoms. 
it is bonded to y nitrogen atom. Coming to the next point, let us discuss why the hemoglobin exhibits red color. The blood is also red in color. The red color of hemoglobin is due to charge transfer. Red color of hemoglobin is due to charge transfer. It is actually ligand to metal, ligand to metal charge transfer. That means what? The ligand is porphyrin ring and the Fe plus to the metal. So ligand to metal charge transfer in the reason on the color exhibition by this hemoglobin or red is or red is red in color or hemoglobin is red in color is slowly due to charge transfer that to be ligand to metal porphyrin ring to Fe plus to the charge transfer takes place. This is the why the blood or hemoglobin exhibiting the red color. Coming to next one. Coming to next point, if you consider in this particular, how many, how many metal chelates are there? See, this is the chelate ligand take, then this is the metal, this ring, what I call chelate ring we call. Now here, first chelate ring, second chelate ring, third chelate ring, fourth chelate ring. Four metal chelate rings are there in the hemoglobin. That is, each ring size also important. Questions appearing in I get one, each ring size, how many chelate rings are there? Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There is 4 metal chelate rings are there. Each ring is what? 6 member ring. 4 metal chelates. 4 metal chelates. And each ring size is what? 6 member. So there is actually 4 metal chelates. And each metal chelate ring size is what? 6 member. Coming to the last point, let me say. I said. Hemoglobin is a complex structure. I said simply skeletal structure. I have put uh, this particular. That is not the entire structure. To make you to understand, I given the skeletal structure. Hemoglobin is a tetramer. Remember, hemoglobin is a tetramer. It is made up of four heme units. It is made up of four. It is actually tetramer. It is made up of four heme units. 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 That means what? Four heme units. Four such units are there. Four such a units are there, four heme units are there for it is actually like this. Four heme units means iron plus porphyrin rings. Like this, four heme units are there. By this, what we can consider each hemoglobin molecule, there is four binding sites for oxygen. So, iron atoms are four, therefore, over the hemoglobin molecule, four oxygen molecules can be easily bonded. Therefore, the tetramer carry four heme units. And uh, each hemoglobin molecule carrying four iron atoms, four binding sites for oxygen. Whatever all these points are very important, repeatedly the questions are appearing. Complete uh, all the points I covered about hemoglobin is mechanism. Still may be there, but this much is sufficient for G base or the advanced. All the points, whatever I discuss, try to remember those points.